Thanks for joining us for another episode of Boom and Bust. I'm your host, Tony Clement. I'm here at the News Forum, where all voices matter. Well, if you're watching this, chances are you're not in Florida right now. But our guest is. She is Susan Harper, Canada's Consul General in Miami, serving Florida, Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Let's check in about trade, commerce, and more. Welcome, Susan. Well, thank you very much. And I, I will say before I call you, Tony, I have to say thank you very much, Minister Clement. I had the honor of working with you in the past, and I've also seen you now down here in Florida trying to do more business. So pleasure to be with you today. Yeah, no, that was great to uh, to spend some time together in Fort Lauderdale at a major international conference. And uh, that's exactly what I want to talk to you about. I want to talk about, first of all, your role as Consul General in Florida. What what Tell our Tell our viewers what exactly that entails. Well, thank you, because uh, most people, when you say consul general or consulate general, that means nothing to them. Um, but it's uh, the kind of government uh, presentation we have outside of capital. And in Canada's case, basically, it's a regional embassy. So we are I'm one of 12 in the U.S., and we cover just about everything except not too much foreign policy. Although in Miami, Gateway to the Americas, we do some of that as well. But commercial, security, defense, migration, and of course, consular services, given how many Canadians do come to Florida. Yeah, I, and I don't want to dwell on that, but uh, you know, if, if, uh, if a Canadian in Florida has, a, has an issue uh, with immigration or with passports, that you, you serve that function as well, right? Absolutely. And we have 24-7 because we're connected to call centers and everything for us. That's a fundamental responsibility that throughout the COVID period, we have continued to uh, to assume. Uh, it's very important to us. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, let's talk a little bit more about trade and commerce, though. What, what do you see as the major challenges and opportunities for Canada? Well, Maybe if you don't mind, I'd like to brag first because uh, Canadians don't always do that. And so if you look at our trade with Florida, which is about $9 billion a year, and uh, according to the Florida Chamber of Commerce, we're number two for market and uh, number three for uh, imports. Uh, we're number two for foreign investment. We're number one by far for uh, international um, tourists. All of these are international rankings, right. international partners of Florida. Um, and if you look at residential real estates here, uh, real estate sales, Florida, uh, actually, Canada is its most important international economic partner. And uh, that's pretty important. It's a, it's a big state, very active, and uh, attracting a lot of interest these days, not just from the international partners, of course. Oh, for sure. Yeah. And so... Would you say that in terms of trade and investment, that the things are still on an upward, uh, uh, upward slope, that we're doing more and more trade all the time? Absolutely. And uh, we and everyone else, uh, I think in this context of people being able to work remotely, uh, the, uh, you know, usually when you look at investment, you start by looking at, is the talent going to be there? Can I get the talent I need? Workforce is the number one issue. And it, it is a bit of a troubling issue here in Florida, as it is in many places where people are rethinking things. But overall, uh, uh, workforce, there is a lot of talent here. And people now are saying, gee, pretty nice weather down there, uh, mm -hmm. certainly when it's not hurricane season. Right. <laughs> and we'd like down. So, uh, you know, uh, our job is not to attract investment for Florida, where, of course, to build Canadian prosperity, Canadian jobs. We like to see Canadian companies exporting. Uh, but business, uh, once they start exporting, sometimes invest. And uh, so we work very hard to uh, develop the international trade in both directions. It's all in Canada's interest. We've got about a half a minute before our first break, but uh, that, just reiterate that point, that co companies who want to look at investments, or they, they come to you, right? And you've got that expertise? We work highly with Canadian companies looking to export to our markets or American companies looking to invest in Canada. 
our partner here in Florida, we have several, but our main one, Enterprise Florida, does the reverse. Mm -hmm. We both together promote international trade and investment. We're going to continue our discussion with Susan Harper. She's our Consul General in Florida. After these messages, please stay with us. And welcome back to Boom and Bust. I'm your host, Tony Clement, here at the News Forum, here with Susan Harper. She is Canada's Consul General in Miami, Florida. Susan, uh, talking about, you know, Americans investing in Canada, Canadians investing in Florida. Uh, tell us a little bit about the uh, Americans investing in Canada. What, what's, what is the thing that gets their interest going in doing that kind of investment? It's very interesting, um, and that has evolved. I've been fortunate enough to be here over five years, and even in those five years, that has evolved. Um, uh, certainly, we put a lot of effort into helping facilitate companies find and br sometimes bring in the talent that they need, and companies really appreciate that. And uh, there have been periods where, uh, frankly, we've been very competitive uh, successfully with our neighbor to the south here in attracting uh, international companies that have uh, a range of international employees. Mm -hmm. That ability of Canada to understand that companies in international business have international employees and working with the Department of Immigration, Refugee and Citizenship Canada our commercial section has been able to uh, uh, facilitate that kind of uh, investment attraction. Um, certainly we also, uh, for example, energy. Mm. It's very interesting. We have a major energy investment in Florida by uh, uh, Nova Scotia. Similarly, we have a very major investment in Canada by Florida Power and Light uh, through NextEra. We, we have incredibly strong um, relationships in certain sectors, and that engenders that kind of partnership. Got it. So is, is part of the attraction of Canada to these investors uh, the diversity and the quality of our workforce? Is that one of the areas where we can shine? Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I must admit, uh, Miami's pretty diverse. South yeah. Florida is pretty diverse. But frankly, that also works to our benefit. For example, uh, uh, we have a lot of Haitian uh, Floridians and uh, some of them in very key roles here in South Florida. Well, many of them have family members in Canada. So we try to build up those kind of relationships and uh, um, the diversity in Florida is attracted, I think, by the diversity in Canada. But I know that uh, when I see uh, tr Tourism Toronto, for example, had a great video showing off the diversity in Canada and people here found that very attractive. And we know that's not just tourism, that's business potential. Right, yeah, it's, it's a, a part of your job, uh, maybe a big part is trying to educate, right? Uh, uh, here's what Canada actually is in 2022. Uh, it, it, it absolutely is because uh, a lot of people here, when they hear I'm Consul General for Canada, say, oh, I have a very nice Canadian in my building or down the street and something. And they see us first and foremost as, you know, tourists who come here for the lovely weather. Um, that's why I always like to emphasize we have a, a big security and defense footprint here in Florida, a big secure, a big commercial economic footprint and underline how much those partnerships go in both directions. Hmm. What's the security and defense footprint? Can you give us a bit more detail on that? Sure. Um, as people know, we are a big defense ally of the United States, uh, both for North America and the region and globally. And uh, there are several big bases here in Florida. So we have almost 10% of the Canadian Armed Forces in the United States here in Florida. And Canada, we don't always talk about that dimension of our relationship quite to the same extent. In the United States, there is a lot of recognition of that dimension. So part of my job being to wave the flag, I like to recognize that we have almost 10% of the Canadian Armed Forces here in the various 
basis for NORAD, for uh, CENTCOM, which handles Middle East, that's the big base for the United States, uh, SOUTHCOM, the big uh, base for the uh, uh, looking south into the Caribbean Latin American. We work uh, on uh, out of uh, a place called Giada South uh, down in Key West on uh, trying to control trafficking and drugs and trafficking in people in this region. And uh, Canada's very present and very appreciated for that. We also have other uh, dimensions. Uh, we have a Mountie in our office, for example, federal law enforcement, uh, cooperation. The nature of the beast here in Florida is it's a peninsula that extends into this region. And we're back here at Boom and Bust. I'm your host, Tony Clement, here with Susan Harper. She is Canada's Consul General in Miami, Florida. Uh, Susan, I uh, just want to unpack a little bit more. We did, we did talk about COVID earlier on, but COVID obviously has changed the world. And what, do you, what have you had to cope with with that in terms of your role uh, as a trade and commerce official for Canada? And what do you see as the future for, for trade and commerce in this COVID world? Wow, that's a lot. Um, well, first of all, because we have so many Canadians uh, crossing the border coming to Florida and uh, so many Americans crossing the border, of course, uh, the impact on border it being closed for an extended period, uh, our customs uh, liaison officer, we have one in our uh, consulate general, is very active with the rest of her network. Uh, and uh, we do spend time explaining that because often people assume that what's happening in Florida or in the States is exactly what's happening in Canada. And of course it's not. Um, we also, uh, so we facilitate through our consular area and in talking to Americans, just their understanding of what's necessary to, to uh, cross the border. Mm -hmm. We've also um, have had to deal with uh, other areas of our mandate, uh, consular responsibilities for Canadians who sometimes got stuck down here. We had a major uh, issue when we had, uh, for example, cruise ships. Uh, although things are have evolved on that front, we, we did have a, a major crisis when there were Canadians who were having trouble landing. Florida was good enough to let those ships land and then we could help our citizens. We uh, also, business, it's affecting trade shows. Uh, most people who are in the business area know that uh, so many events now are virtual, including trade shows. Right. There are some advantages to that. There are some disadvantages to that. So we continue to work with our partners to uh, ensure that they aren't just having their breath taken away by all the people from the Northeast United States moving down here. Right. but that uh, Canada is still very interested in being a partner. And then of course, like everyone else, we have duty of care to our staff. Uh, obviously we're much better placed than some of our colleagues in other countries. And we're quite aware of that with uh, vaccines, um, testing, um, masks. You won't see quite as many here as you will see at home. Um, but uh, certainly those elements and the implications for business with remote working. Right. That's handled quite differently here than it is in Canada. And so uh, all of those dimensions affect our work and how we connect both to our clients in Canada and our contacts here in Florida. Thank you for that answer. I, I'd love to know as well, because I, I saw you in action uh, when I was down for that conference in Fort Lauderdale earlier uh, last year. Uh, but you know, obviously Washington DC, we've got a huge embassy there. They they take command and control of our, of our trade messaging and our political messaging in D.C. But you've got an important governor in Florida. You've got the state legislature in Florida. So what, how do you deliver a message on behalf of Canada in that political milieu in Florida? Wow. Well, um, I'm actually in the capital of Florida right now, Tallahassee. Um, we... Uh, we certainly advocacy for Canadian interests uh, uh, is a key part of our role. And as we know in Canada as well, that isn't only in Ottawa. And so uh, by having 12 consulates general across uh, the United States, 
we are able to uh, contact decision makers and decision influencers at several levels. Yes, at the federal level, I go up to Washington two to four times a year because sometimes it's easier to get to the congressional delegation on the Hill if I go to their offices there. But I'm in Tallahassee every year as well to talk to legislators, to talk to a state administration. We have some issues there, some of the key business organizations. Uh, So we do uh, talk to uh, the um, state level. Unfortunately, we're right now here talking about Buy America and how that is really not good for Florida jobs and Florida prosperity, uh, as well as uh, for their international partners like Canada. Um, We also uh, spend a lot of time with mayors. There are key mayors uh, in across the U.S., huge cities that uh, uh, it's very important for them to also see Canada as a key partner and ally. And so uh, when you're out of the capital, you're dealing with all those other decision makers and decision influencers who certainly feed back into Washington. Uh, Very important topic. I'm actually going to come back to it after our break. We are going to take a brief break. Please stay with us. We'll be right back. And welcome back to Boom and Bust. I'm your host, Tony Clement, here uh, discussing with Susan Harper. She is Canada's Consul General in Miami. She's actually in Tallahassee as we're speaking, but she covers all of Florida Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands as well. Susan, I I just want to come back to this uh, very important topic of Buy America, and uh, I think it's important for our viewers to know, I remember doing this, I was part of many delegations in Washington, but also in state capitals, uh, uh, you know, trying to get the message out that, hey, you know, Canada is part of your supply chain. You don't, you want to keep Uh, trading with Canada. You don't want to do all by America because it's actually going to affect jobs in your home state. Is is that basically the message you're you're going with? Um, Yes, absolutely. That's the basic message. And of course, it adapts to the specifics of the situation. Um, From our point of view with Florida, with one in five jobs based in trade, which is about what Canada is. So a a highly trade dependent economy, I think it's understandable that uh, people are saying, well, I want to increase Floridian, American prosperity and jobs. Uh, It's our job to point out that actually Buy America can have the absolute opposite effect when we have supply chains under the pressure they're under now. And frankly, as as you know well, uh, um, we have every reason to look again at our supply chains uh, having gone through COVID. We want not just innovative and competitive partners, but reliable and credible partners. And uh, not everybody can check all those boxes, but I'm here to explain not only do we, we uh, right now, but we will continue to be interested in checking all those boxes. And that is in Florida's interest to think uh, we can produce better products, which will in turn create more Floridian prosperity and jobs if we partner with credible and reliable as well as competitive and innovative partners. So that's part of the message that uh, we're taking. uh, I'm taking to a number of the state legislators at the moment. And I think it's important to for people to understand that, uh, you know, when you're dealing with state governors, for instance, they're very popular. They're probably the most popular political actors in the U.S. political system, more so than Congress people, more so than the president who always has ups and downs. Uh, but the, st- the governors are very popular. And if they, if they get on an issue like Canada-U.S. trade, they can, especially collectively, they can help move some mountains. Is that right? Well, that's the voice of experience talking, I can hear, uh, absolutely. And uh, we certainly deal with the administration as well as the legislature here. And uh, that is that is a very key point. And that's, again, just as in Canada, it's not just in Ottawa. You have to work across the country. And that's our job here, working across the country so we can bring those Canadian interests uh, to everyone's attention. Uh, we've got about a minute, a uh, minute and a half to go. How can Canadian businesses succeed in the U.S. based on your experience? 
it's very easy for both Canadians and Americans to generalize and think I made it here, I can make it across the border. Um, International business has huge potential, but it is a different market. And in fact, there are regional markets. So there is great potential, but people have to understand the region that they are dealing with. And I think uh, we like to think the Trade Commissioner Service out of our Consulate General and across Canada and the, uh, the US and the world can help with that. Just knowing your market and understanding it is different and seeing what you bring, which so many Canadians do, there's great potential if you go in having done your homework. Uh, Susan Harper is our guest today. Uh, she is Canada's Consul General in Miami, serving Florida, Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Susan, thanks for joining us today. Really interesting discussion. We wish you well in your continued uh, service to this country. Well, thank you so much for this opportunity. Pleasure speaking with you. Thank you. Once again, I would like to thank our special guest today, Susan Harper. She is uh, Canada's Consul General in Miami, uh, serving Florida, Puerto Rico, and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Talked mostly about Florida there, obviously, because of the great interest that Canadians have with that state, both uh, from a tourist point of view, but also from a business point of view. A lot of business happening there, obviously, and her consulate is working very hard on behalf of Canadian interests. We'll keep in touch with her, as I'm sure other issues will crop up over time. Thanks for watching today. <music>